The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 109 Second Day Starlight didn't need to crack her eyes to regain consciousness, floating pleasantly in the black haze of sleep that could be banished with so much as a thought. It warmed her and wrapped around her like a comforting blanket, preventing her from feeling the limbs that would likely cramp with pain as soon as moved. Maple was against her, and so was her bed, but the feeling was so proper and normal that her nerves registered nothing save for peace. No light shone on her to warm her coat, but an internal sense born of days in the wilderness told her it was uh, mid-afternoon. She felt she could sleep all day if she willed it, and after the previous day of exertion it would be more than welcome. At the same time, the sooner she got herself back to normal, the more useful that rest would be. Who wanted to wake up, ready to face the day, and be greeted with sunset? Mm, she might, if she was honest with herself. There was always something about the night that felt welcoming to her, as if the black sky and bright moon liked seeing her under them. But Maple wouldn't want to do that, and she couldn't afford to make herself her own first priority when the mare was around. Maple loved her and accepted her, and that meant Starlight had to keep her happy and safe when she needed it in turn. And right then, that meant letting her decide when they would wake up. Not blinking or even swallowing, she rubbed and rolled her head deeper into her new mother's coat, rearranging her legs just slightly and settled in to wait in peace. Maple snuffled from the movement. Without lifting her head, she asked, Starlight? Mm, Starlight mumbled, mouth tasting of sleep. Last night feels like a nightmare, Maple whispered, curling around so that her cheek was right next to the filly, resting her chin on the edges of Starlight's hooves. I wonder what will happen today. Mm, Starlight agreed, flicking an ear. Apparently, Maple wanted to wake up right then, which was maybe a bit too soon. It wouldn't hurt at all to lay there for a while, like they did in Riverfall. Hopefully Maple would feel the same without her having to say anything. My... Mm. Starlight felt Maple's muscles tense, shake briefly, and go limp. My legs hurt. Ow. She exhaled softly. Oh, I hope we don't do too much running around today. I'm not sure how much I can take. Silence. Starlight, I... Her voice lowered even below a whisper. I'm sorry, she breathed. I'm sorry, she breathed. I wasn't myself last night. I got scared and panicked and lost hope, even when I know how important it is never to do that. But today will be better. You'll see. I can already feel that today will be a good day and we'll be able to help ponies and make progress and do something good. Hmm... Starlight didn't particularly care what she was saying, only that the more awake she grew, the more aware of her cramps she became. Going back to sleep was definitely the best option. I still don't want you to be in danger, of course, Maple murmured, seemingly having no intention of allowing that. I think our plan from last night is still good, to go to the Earth District where the guards won't recognize us and start again. Maybe we'll go back home, or maybe Ironridge will still work, but it will be all right. Things will get better. We can still have a good time and make this a fun adventure, Starlight. I promise. As Maple talked, Starlight swiveled her ears, going about the process of sorting background noise into sounds she knew, familiarizing herself with her surroundings still without opening her eyes or surrendering the last traces of comforting fog in her mind. Maple's talking, Maple's breathing, a set of hoofsteps clumping down the corridor beyond their door, likely a stallion from the heaviness with which they struck, distant vibrations, perhaps echoes through the rock, and from behind them... <laughs> Starlight pried her eyes open, leaning up and looking over Maple's side at the same time as the older mare lifted her head to look back for herself. In the second bed, where Gerardo once intended to sleep, lounged Admiral Valet, sprawled upside down and sound asleep. 
Her eyelids were cracked from the force of gravity, and her mouth was open with a tongue and a small thread of drool hanging out. Her wings were spread, her hat was missing, a banana peel rested on her belly, and her legs stuck straight up in the air, one occasionally twitching. Is she? Starlight muttered, voice grumbly from just waking up. I wonder how long she's been here, Maple mused. Didn't she leave just before? As if detecting the presence of eyes on her, Valet blinked awake and her twitching froze. Oh, hey, you're up, she remarked, moving as little as possible. Uh, huh? Hey, do I, uh, look as cute as I feel right now? I might not be the best judge of that, Maple admitted hesitantly. You look... peaceful? Yeah. Valet flopped upright in a single motion, dropping the banana peel and flipping her mane. You ever dream about busting up every single thing that's ever ticked you off and having superpowers that make you look flashy and do epic charge-ups and transformations and lasers and stuff? It's the best. Definitely recommend. She yawned massively, showing her fangs, then shook and blinked rapidly. So, I feel like tagging along with you guys some more today. What's the plan? Why are you in our room? Starlight asked, ignoring the question. Her voice was successfully not hostile, but she hoped Valet would get the point that it was rude and uncouth to spend the night in someone else's room, unannounced and uninvited. With a shrug, the bad pony answered, Doesn't feel like it. That fluffy bed beats whatever random roof or tree I'd usually hide on, and if you're somehow in more trouble than I'm aware of, it'd be dumb to turn down an excuse for a free fight. Besides, it's not like I was interrupting anything. Maple squinted. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, nothing. Valet well, looked away innocently. By the way, you guys are like, what, siblings? I mean, you act like mother and child, but look just a little close in age for... Uh, she cringed. I adopted her, Maple answered firmly. I mean, we don't even look that much alike. Uh, completely different would be a better way to put it, Starlight thought, looking over herself and her coloration. Maple's dusty tan coat shared no similarities with her own pale lilac, and the mare's reddish-brown, neither straight nor curly mane and ruby eyes were both far away from hers as well. They were even different races, which was made ironic by the fact that Maple was the better magician of the two. Her cutie mark was strong and versatile, and Starlight still felt a vague buzz in her head that told her magic was in emergency-only mode. Yeah, makes sense. Shrugging again, Valet wandered over to the fruit bag, pulled out a banana, and dangled it over the pear with a wing. Catch! So, what's the plan again? As Starlight took and peeled the banana, Maple answered, We're going to the Earth District. We'll be less likely to run into trouble there from that captain finding us and remembering us, and there's a pony there we're looking for as well. Valet raised an eyebrow. The Earth District is a pretty big place, you know. Maple nodded. We have directions, or an address at least. Well, suit yourselves. Valet closed her eyes and pranced toward the door, marching with a spring in her step. Luckily, I'm pretty good at that place myself, and don't go worrying about the defense force, I'll take care of that. Come on, let's get started. Wait a minute. Slowly, Maple scrambled to her hooves, wincing every time she moved her legs. Ow! 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 Last night was not good on my body. All of yesterday can go jump in a river, actually, and... Ow! Ah! Okay. Whew! She panted. I'm good. Just give me a minute to pack this fruit, okay? And Starlight, you should stretch now, since I don't think I feel up to carry you today. Starlight carefully moved her legs, testing them before relying on them to stand. Her muscles were knotted and her hooves were sore, the latter of which was partly her fault for being too tired to remember to take her horseshoes off before bed. Still, while it was a degree of uncomfort she had done her best to avoid pushing herself to in the mountains, it wasn't debilitating. She would be able to walk and maybe run and at least trust her legs more than her horn, and hopefully have a short recovery period as well. Just as long as they didn't have to walk several dozen miles a day. Don't bother taking the whole thing, Valet advised, pointing a wing at Maple in the fruit sack as she straightened her beret with a forehoof. 
Just eat what you want now and dump the rest. We'll get more later. Trust me, it's the funnest thing in the city. Shrugging, Maple pocketed several fruits regardless as Starlight looked on. I'm not traveling without food nearby again, she resolutely stated, finally coming up and taking a breath. Shall we go? Filet nodded, extended a foreleg, and pushed the door open. End of chapter 109